Hey, it's your open source advocate, and every week I bring you new open source, self-hosted software that is absolutely amazing. I hope you'll like, subscribe, and tell your friends about this channel so they can come along on the journey with us. Now let's get started. It's your open source advocate, and I'm back with another video. Today I want to talk about a music streaming application that you can self-host that's open source that's pretty nice. It's called Ampache, so A-M-P-A-C-H-E. I've been looking around for one of these for quite a while where I could stream my own music from my own server and I've already done a video on Jellyfin in the past so if you haven't looked at Jellyfin it's a really really great uh, self-hosted server media server so if you know Plex or if you know MB that's what Jellyfin is except it's fully open source and it's completely self-hostable so I was looking for something that I could host myself and had a nice web player uh, but also had the opportunity to have applications on the desktop and have applications on my devices and things like that. So as I looked, I found a few options, like I said, and the first one that I really, really kind of came across and dove into was Apache. So I want to go through that with you today. Uh, I think you really enjoy it. So here's a screenshot. Um, I actually set this up. I got all my music set up. I got all my ID3 tags updated. I've probably got 20 songs left that are still in the Apple format that has DRM, which is M4P. So if you have a song with .M4P, you'll have to convert those things. And, and there's multiple different ways to do that, but none of them are super convenient for me because I don't use Windows. Um, I do have a Mac, but it doesn't have a CD drive anymore, so I can't burn a CD and then rip it again. So there's, there's some other options out there that are pay options, but nothing that I've found yet that's free or open source. So if any of you have answers for that one, send it to me. I'd, I'd love to see it. Um, so Apache is really, really nice. It's got a nice web front end, so it basically runs as a server on your system, and it needs a, a database in the back end um, that it uses for configuration and some other settings and things like that. But it's actually pretty lightweight from what I've seen so far. It doesn't take up a lot of space. The thing that's going to take up the most space is going to be your music collection, honestly. Um, so what you do, what, what I'm going to do today is actually do a Docker install because I, I love Docker. Docker is like a super tiny, minimized, very minimal thing that's virtualized to run a server. And I think that's awesome. So... I enjoy Docker. If you don't like Docker, you don't have to run this in Docker. There are instructions out there for how to install it completely natively on the on the hardware. But I'm going to do a Docker install today because I think that's the easiest way to go. It's the lowest barrier to entry to using this thing and getting it set up. So I did get this set up on my own home server. Uh, that's where I'm going to set it up today. And then I'll kind of show you what I've got set up for my Nginx proxy so that I can actually get to it from outside on the web. But I'll go out here to my server, and this is all running on my local uh, machine here. Um, if I've got to type it right, it's going to help. So I set up this port. This is not the default port. This is just a port I'm using because I knew I wanted to have it set up for um, Nginx Proxy Manager, and I have a lot of other things running on this server already. So this is kind of where you start. It starts off very empty, and I'll go through the usage of it first, and then I'll come back and do the installation for you. And there's there's installation in the terminal side, so so the command line, um, very easy. It's just the Docker command, really. That's all you have to do. Nothing special. Um, and then once you do that part, there is um, a, a startup wizard that's here in the browser. And when you go through the wizard, it's pretty straightforward. And then once you do that, you're in. You're, you're on this. You're on this setup. So I'll I'll, I'll destroy the the Docker container, and we'll redo it, and we'll go through everything together. So uh, let me move forward with you here, though. Um, so when you get to the user interface, it's empty. You're not going to see anything in here. There's no songs. There's no playlists yet because I haven't told it to add that stuff. I've got my stuff. I've got my music in the right place, and we'll talk about where that is. But you have to tell it. You know, go go get it. So. Um, first, I want to talk about settings because settings are really important when you start up a system like this. You can make this secure. Right now, I'm running this like on a, on a port 80 type port. You can actually make this run on a 443 port. That's not hard, and I'll show you how to do it. So the online instructions don't include adding that port, but we're going to add it when we run our Docker container. But out of the gate, settings. So you have interface settings, and this is where I messed up the theme, so it's way down at the bottom. So this, this system, this Apache, has tons and tons of settings that you can change very easily. It's not something where you have to know some kind of weird configuration language. It just asks you some questions, and you can set up your, your language. Um, you can set things to enabled or disabled. 
and you can set your time zones uh, you can set up what the title is up here in the uh, tab if you don't like Apache you can just change this to whatever you want you know music server it, it, it doesn't matter it's just going to change that title up there um, and, and so as you move down there's a lot of settings I don't want to go through every single setting with you because it's honestly just so much it would take me hours to go through it with you um, it's going to be much easier if you get this set up and then start looking at all the settings and make the things change that you want to change um, there is dark and light i have not tried light but we can do that too so we'll change it to light here and then uh, top menu so you can have disable or enable um, i think my menu is on the side so i'm just going to leave it disabled but just know you can change that as well so I change that and now you have to do a refresh after you update your settings and it goes out and it refreshes so you can see it looks pretty much the same it's just light colored now so if you have your lights off uh, and you're watching this in the middle of the night I'm sorry about the extreme brightness all of a sudden so I'm gonna switch it back real quick to dark mode because that is a little bit easier on my eyes um, hopefully it's not hard for you to see what I'm doing uh, and I'm going to refresh again and if you look, it changed the title, just like I said, Music Server. So it's not Apache anymore. So after that, you've got options. And again, a huge list of options that you can change here. So playlists, you have a few things. So there's democratic, which means like if you're in an office and you're playing this over the speakers and you have everybody a user account, they can get in and basically vote on what the next song should be or how the playlist should flow. Um, that's kind of a cool feature. It's not something I'd use here at home, but it's pretty awesome. And then playlist type is M3U. I guess there's different types of files that you can save these as, so you can kind of pick which file type you want. M3U sounds fine to me, so there's nothing to change there. Um, streaming, so you can set up how this streams and a few defaults about the streaming setup. Uh, and then we'll click on update just so it saves our changes there. And then the account, so you can change your account defaults and preferences here, and that's your settings. So settings are set. I'm going to go over to admin real quick because there's a lot of admin stuff as well. So we're going to skip this section for just a minute um, so you can add users like i said before um, you can browse users so you can see all the users that you have set up and then you can clear the now playing so this basically kind of keeps track of things that have played recently you can clear that list if you want to so you have access control lists as well so if you want to try to access uh, try to control access to your server by setting up different ip addresses and things like that you can Right here you can see by default it sets all addresses and all uh, IPv6 addresses as a allowed. Um, you can go back and change that. So if you're running on a VPN like WireGuard and you want to set it to only allow con connections from the WireGuard addresses, then you can do that here. So here you can see the access control list information. And this is all just default stuff set up uh, out of the gate here. So if we keep going down, so there's local play controllers that you can go up here and kind of check out and see what's happening. So here's some things that have local play. Um, and then catalog types. So a catalog is basically where you're going to insert that music. That's why I skipped that section for just a minute because there's a few things to go over there for setting up your music. And then you can manage your plugins. So this is kind of important because if you want to stream this to your phone or to your devices, things like that, you want to set up a couple of the plugins that will allow that. Um, there's lots and lots of plugins in here. I think there's a few though that, that definitely need to be set up. And um, so you can kind of filter through those, I believe, up here. You can search basically. Um, so you can tell it, well, you can search for songs. You can tell it what kind of song you're searching for. We may not want to set this up with plugins. We may want to go somewhere else and set up the types of devices that can connect. So. There are a lot of plugins here that you, that you can take advantage of and you can activate them here using the plugins. So here you've got quite a few other settings that you didn't see on the settings screen. So as you come down to the bottom of this list, you'll see system. And when you click on that, you'll see some, some extra settings that you want to kind of go through here. So force HTTP playback regardless of port and you want to have that disabled or else it'll try to play back over HTTP. Now, if you set up SSL and for some reason it doesn't play back over SSL for you, then you may want to go and disable this. That, that could be a problem where SSL is not allowing the stream to work correctly. Uh, locking songs. So moving on down. So DAAP backend. So basically if you're going to use the DAA, DAAP um, connection method for whatever client you're using, then there's a, a passcode that you need to set up and then you need to activate that. Um, 
use the, use the DAAP backend, so you would enable it here. Uh, same thing for Subsonic. So Subsonic is the most popular backend. So when you look at iOS-based applications, there's several out there that are called uh, that are that if you just look for Subsonic in the App Store, you'll find a few applications. Just try different ones and see which one works best for you. Uh, but you want to enable this and make sure it's enabled. So um, right here, you would click on this and then click Enable, and it should be enabled already. Um, so the the UPnP backend is up to you. And then there's also a web dev backend. So there's different ways that can connect, but I'd say subsonic is the most common um, that you'll find. So you have a few other settings here that you can go through and, and kind of check out. Those top ones are kind of the most important ones uh, out of the gate. So here you can say allow users to upload their own music. That's fine. Um, if you want to allow that, then, then enable it. Um, allow users to edit uploaded tags or uploaded songs and so on so so you can go through and kind of allow things and disallow things for your different users so a lot of settings and a lot of administration here so I'm gonna go back to the top and at the top here you've got this add catalog this is where you're gonna add your music so basically catalog name you can give it whatever you want so this could be Brian's music that's fine um, the catalog type is local so I'm going to set up a local music system on this server because the server I'm connected to is where I'm going to tell it you know how to get to this stuff I don't really mess with this one as far as the the file name pattern uh, folder pattern I also don't change and then gather art I just leave that checked that's fine build playlists from playlist files so if you actually put playlist files in there it would try to build playlists based on those files so if you already have some m3u's you could do that um, and then catalog media type is music, so that's the only option we've got. And then our path. So this is what you need to know as far as the path to where your music is. In my case, this is set up in Docker, and the path was slash media. So it should be fine. I'm going to say add catalog, and we'll see if I remembered correctly. Now that I'm in my server, I can actually just do my ctop command and check and see what things are running. And I can see that Apache is there, and it's running. So I'm going to tell it quit, and I'm going to say docker stop Apache. So we're going to stop the server from running. Now that it's stopped, if we click on the refresh button, you see that that server is no longer running. Now we're going to come back to our terminal, and I'm going to say docker rm Apache. So I'm getting rid of that container completely. Now I need to install it again. So I can even say remove the image for Apache. So I can say docker rmi Apache because I want you to know kind of how this works when you don't have the image downloaded either. So I've got a lot of images on here, but there's the one that I need. So we'll grab the image ID and we will say docker rmi, which I is for image. And then we'll paste that ID in there, and it's going to get rid of that image for me, and it gives me some output. Okay, so now we can clear the screen, and we're going to use a command that I've already run uh, previously. All right, I'm going to put that command in with my paste here, and I'll go through what the command has for us. So let's just scooch back here. So we're going to say docker run dash D. So we want it to run as a daemon, which means run in the background. So once I close the terminal, it doesn't kill the application. And then we're going to give it a name, so we're just going to call it Apache, so we know what it is. And then we're going to give it a volume. So this volume, oh, this is my problem. So I did have my volume set up incorrectly. Um, so we're going to backspace this out, and I'm going to use home slash Brian slash music Apache, because this is where my music is on this server. So this is the actual folder path to the music on my server here at my house. And I'm going to tell that to map to the slash media folder inside the container. Now it's going to set it as read only. I'm going to take that off. That's the suggestion from them. I, I don't want it to be read only. Um, I think that's read only for Docker, but I want it to be able to add music and things like that. So I'm going to take off the read only for now. Now we have dash P for port number. And we're going to map 8051. Now this is just me. You can map any port you want. This is the port that you're going to hit on your actual server. 
So this is the actual network on your server, on your host. We're gonna map that to port 80 inside of the container. So this is what Apache thinks it's running on inside the container. The other port we're gonna map is gonna be 8543. Again, that's on my host, and we're gonna map that to SSL 443 so that we can have an SSL connection when we're ready. And then the last thing is give it the actual name of the uh, image that we're gonna pull down from Docker. Once we've got all that stuff typed in, we're just gonna hit enter, and we're gonna let it run. As this is downloading, you can see it's got a little bit of heft to it. So I mean, that first one there is, f uh, that, that, that one piece is 407 megabytes. So this is not just getting Apache, it's also getting MySQL, um, getting that set up inside the container, and it, then it's also getting Apache and setting it up inside the container, and it's making a connection between those two inside that container. Whew, okay, that is finally done. That, that seems like it took forever. Uh, I, I absolutely fast forwarded through this for you. Um, so don't feel like it, it was really short. It, it actually seemed to take quite a while. I don't know why it was such a slow download on those last couple of pieces, but it's done. So it should be there and it should be up and running. That's really kind of all we had to do. So we're gonna go back over to the browser and I'm gonna get rid of all that uh, extra. And I'm just gonna do my port. And there we go. So this is kind of your startup wizard and where it really comes to. So I'm gonna, my, my language is already set. If it's not correct for you, just click this and pick the language that is correct for you. Next, we're gonna move forward and it's gonna check the system. Now this should come up okay if you're running this in the Docker and using the container that I did because it's, it's pulling all this stuff down into the container for you. If you're running this on your own system, then you need to pay attention because this uh, Apache needs all of these things in order to make sure it'll run correctly. Now you will get this warning about um, the PHP config not allowing bigger than 20 megabyte files. Uh, I don't think any of my music files are bigger than 20 megabytes. I'm still an MP3 kind of person. If you've got like some kind of flack or something that, you know, there are 400 megabyte files, you'll want to learn how to go change this setting and, and make it so that you can upload bigger files if you want to upload those. Um, so we're going to hit continue. So this next step is important. So it shows you the progress up here. So this is where it's going to set up the database. So you just leave this and this alone. Leave Apache, leave localhost. Don't mess with the port unless you have some strange reason for knowing that it's running on a different port. It should not be and it's inside of the container. This, you're going to leave alone. Don't mess with it. It's just the way MySQL installs now. Don't, don't mess with it. You're going to keep coming down. You're going to leave create database checked. And then you're going to move over here to where it says um, overwrite if database already exists. Um, I, I wouldn't check that one because your database shouldn't already exist. It's inside of a container that you just pulled down. And then finally, create database user. So this is the part that you want to um, check because you want to create a database user. Now, it defaults to Apache. Um, you, can, you can leave it if you want to. Um, it's fine. Just don't, don't set it to root. But you can set it to whatever you want. Just remember what you change it to. And then you need to put in a password. Don't forget what you put as the password. Don't worry about the web path, just, just leave it as is. Here we're gonna leave it as Apache. We're gonna leave this as localhost. Here we're gonna leave Apache, but I don't know what they put in here. So since I don't know, I'm gonna retype my password. Now, if you changed this name, you need to change this name. If you changed it on the last step, you need to change it here. And then of course, type in the password you typed in on the last step. So this talks about the installation type. I would just leave it as default, but it's up to you. There's a couple of different ones here. Allow transcoding, um, completely up to you. I don't think I did it the first time, so um, it, it's up to you. I, I am having to kind of convert my, well, I had to convert my M3, my M4P files from Apple. I'll have to convert out of DRM, but that's because there's DRM on it. Um, my M4A files, I converted just because it didn't like to stream those to my iOS device. I don't know why. It's an iOS device. You'd think it'd be fine, but it didn't want to. I'm going to check all of these so that I do have access to these APIs if I want to, and I have access to players that can use those, but you don't have to. You can click on the file insight if you want to see a little bit more detail, but when I looked at it, it didn't really say anything to me that I needed to know. 
but when you're when you're ready you're gonna click on this create config and it'll be done and now you're gonna create an initial account so this is kind of your your user account that you're generating so I'm just gonna use mine here and I'm gonna put in my own password I want and then we will hit create account so it tells you here's all of the versions and the things that are going on you're gonna scroll all the way down here and you're gonna say update now it's gonna to try to go out and update itself it's gonna come back most likely and tell you no update needed and then you click here to say return to the main screen and you'll get the login screen so I'm gonna say that's not right and then you can say remember me if it's your own machine click on login and we're back to where we started so you can kinda of see we're right back where we started you can expand that out by clicking on those little dots and if you click again it, it goes back down but now we're back set up so I'm gonna go back to my administration side and I'm gonna to go to add catalog I'm going to give it my name. And it's a local catalog because it's local to the machine this is running on. And then I'm going to give it this path. And then I'm going to say add catalog. Now you see it's starting to grab my actual music. And up here you can see that it's actually updating some information. So it's going to run through the, I don't know, I've got 100 songs on here, maybe close to 100 songs. So it's going to go and run through those and then it'll be basically be set up. So this will keep coming up. It's a toast message. I think it's actually done. So you can just say continue. And if you want to do more than, than that, you can. But remember, if you add music later, so you'll add it to that folder, just do an SSH or an SCP, or if you have access to the machine through a GUI, Go in and add it to the folder, which is, in my case, slash home, slash Brian, slash music, slash Ampachi. Whatever you map to the slash media, that's where you're going to put that music. And when you do, you come in here, you go to the catalog, show catalogs. You're going to select this drop down, and you're going to say update. And then you're going to hit go. And it's going to try to update itself. So it's going to look real quick. It's probably not going to find anything special. Because it says, oh, I already did all this. It's going to run through a little task to make sure. I'm going to go to the songs section and you'll see already that almost all of my music is here and it's ready to go so I can kind of scroll through this now. Over time it'll go out and try to grab album art and things like that too. Um, but now we've got some things set up where I could actually listen to music. So I'm not going to play any of this music because all of this music is copyright protected and I do not own the copyrights uh, so I don't want to get taken down off YouTube. I want you guys to be able to see this and understand how to set things up. But it's real easy. There's a play button right here if you want to hear a single song. If you want to add to a playlist or create a playlist, you can. But you have stars, you have hearts, you have all kinds of things you can do, just like in any other kind of uh, music streaming service. So if you want to add this song to a playlist, you click on this, and you see there's no playlist, but there's add new. So it's going to pop up a little thing, and I can say hip hop fun. Now this is an old hip hop song, I know, don't worry. But... Now if I go down here, and I don't know, none of these probably fit hip hop, um, but it's okay. Um, yeah, right here. So I can say add this song to hip hop. I don't, I don't know why I have it twice. I have two versions of the songs for some reason. Um, but if I get down here and I say, oh man, I want to create a rock, I just click again, add new. I'm going to say rock. I'm going to say okay, and now that song's in my rock uh, setup, and then I can go here. And I can say add this one to rock. So little by little you build up your playlists in, in that list. And you just click on that little tag there and say add it to that playlist. And it does. So if I go back up here I can see playlists now. And you see I've got two playlists. And then I can just click on the play button. It'll start playing through the playlist in order. And then you have randomized things and all kinds of controls that you can do. Again, I'm not going to play those. I don't want to get taken down off of YouTube. Um, but yeah. Here this means that my playlist is locked. So this is telling me that this is a private playlist. So out here I've got this little gear. And when I click on that you can see I can rename the playlist. But I can also say make that public so that anybody who has access to my server can listen to the playlist. So that's kind of a nice feature. But if you have a playlist you just want to keep as yours, you can just leave it locked as private. It, it defaults to private but you can change that. If you want to delete it, there's a little X. You can delete the playlist from there. 
So with Apache, I also want to show you what I mean when I say that it, in updating your, your files here. So here I've got um, not too many showing because it's paged, um, but um, if I go to my songs, so you can kind of see, I've probably got, you know, out of two pages and it's showing, you know, if we say show all, oh, 90, there it had a count right there at the bottom. So you can see I've got a few here, uh, 98 songs, and I think one or two are duplicates, so I had to clean that up. Um, but this is pretty, pretty simple, straightforward. So I'm going to log into my uh, server machine. So I moved a bunch of music over from uh, Apple earlier today. So here, I don't know, I've, I've got tons and tons and tons and tons of music. Um, that I've collected over the years, maybe not as big a libraries as many of you have, but let's just say that I wanted to move a couple of these songs into my library and I'm ready to go. All right, we'll take these songs that I've highlighted. I've highlighted, you know, five or six songs here. I'm just gonna copy them and I'm gonna go into the folder that I, that I mapped, basically. Just gonna paste those in. Doesn't take any time to do that. And I'm just going to exit back out of my server here. So here, in order to update that, I want to go here to my admin settings. And I want to go to show catalogs. And then I'm going to go here to this catalog. And on the right end, I'm going to click on the drop down and I'm going to select update. And then I'm going to click go. And you'll see it's going to start running through. It's going to go through anything that it finds that's new. And it's going to add that to my song collection. So I only added a few, depending on how many you add at a time, this can take longer, it can go faster, it just depends. You can click continue when you're done, and then go back to your song list. And again, if we go uh, here and look, now we see we've got 117 songs instead of 98. So this is Apache. I've gone through a very quick overview of the interface. I wanted to show you how to install it and get it up and running, and then you can get in and play with it because that's the most fun part about software. Um, but enjoy this. If you have friends, if you have family, if you share a place or a space with other people who have a lot of music and you want to kind of combine that and you've been looking for a way to do it, this is a great self-hosted open source project. I really like it. I've got a couple of others that I'm looking at, so I may have some more videos for you on those in the future. But uh, give Apache a try. I really like it. And as far as iOS apps, um, I think the one I'm using is just called Substreamer is what it's called. And it's got a really nice interface. It was very easy to point to my server. It goes and looks every time to see if there's new music and new playlists and things like that. Um, in fact, right now it's trying to connect to my server because it's like, hey, that doesn't look like the same server as there was before because it's not. So before I stop the recording, I do want to show you what I've got set up as far as getting to this from the outside. So it's great to have it on my inside network, but what about when I'm out driving around and I want to connect that to the Bluetooth in the car and I want to hear my music that way? Well, that's where the Nginx Proxy Manager comes up and I've got a video out there on how to set that up and what to do with it, but I'm going to show you real quick what I've done. So this is my Nginx Proxy Manager here on my internal network. And here you're going to see that I've got two different setups. Um, and basically I'm telling it, hey, you need to when you hear anything come in as a music request, you need to point to this IP address and then on this port, and then I've, I've got it set up that way. So here, if I go to edit, you see I've set up the URL that I expect, and then I tell it where to go here on my network and what port to go to. So this is the port that I set up in Docker. Step two, because I set up an off port, I didn't use 443 because there's other things already using 443. I go to this page and I set up the same exact thing. I'm going to put in the same URL. I'm going to put in the same IP address, but I'm going to change this from HTTP to HTTPS. And then the port I'm going to set as that port that I set up for the SSL port when I set up my Docker container. Last step, I type in, well, I don't even type in. This is a drop down. So I put here, request a new SSL certificate, and it went out and did that. And then I said, force SSL and I hit go. So it said, all right, I'm going out to Let's Encrypt and saying, I want an SSL certificate for this URL. Let's Encrypt says, okay, I'm gonna to try to hit that URL on port 80, and if I can, I'll give, you a, I'll give you a certificate. But if I can't, 
you're not going to get it. So you need to make sure that you have port 80, 80 forwarded through your network to the machine that's running the Nginx Proxy Manager. You have to have that set up. So that has to be forwarded on your router at your home. Okay. The second step is this URL needs to point to your public IP address. So if you want to know your public IP address, you go to ipchicken.com and it'll tell you what your public IP address is. Now mine changes from time to time, so there's some other tools out there that you can use to deal with that called Dynamic DNS. It stays the same most of the time. It's very rare that it changes, so for me it's not hard to go and change this in my, in my DNS settings for my domain registrar. But if you have one that changes pretty often, you might want to think about Dynamic DNS. All right, that is everything that I can tell you to get Apache set up and running and really useful both inside and outside your network. If you have questions, let me know. Hopefully you get a lot out of this video. Tell your friends about it, subscribe, and I'll talk to you next time.